like I'm going to be telling you things that were said in the courtroom um, and it does go into a lot of detail and it's absolutely horrendous so I've gave you a warning if you want to switch off the now then switch off if you want to hear it then you can hear it. Um, everything that I'm telling you is true, you can research it for yourself. Um, just bringing this up again, I kind of, I mentioned it on another live um, a couple of months ago but I never went into detail on it but these monsters will be getting ready to be released soon so um, I'm just going to put it back out. Right, so Scotland's worst paedophile ring, right? So this was massive, um, this was a, a thing that was started, a, a stupid group that was started on the internet but it had over 40 members in it and they were literally spread all over the world but the ringleaders of this paedophile ring were called James Rennie and Neil Strachan and they're both from Edinburgh. Um, so I'll give you a bit of background about these two, right? So they lived where they lived in Edinburgh, they were quite res well respected because everybody just thought they were normal guys. Um, they'd done a lot for the community, they'd done a lot of youth work, they ran a youth club, um, they helped in YMCA clubs, they helped out in an LGBT youth club. Um, they they done a lot of stuff for the community and they had a lot of friends. Nobody had any reasons to think anything bad about them or that. So nobody ever thought what was going to happen. So they ran all these youth clubs. Um, they were involved in all these children's things and stuff. But James Rennie had already served three years in prison in 1997 for abusing a, a baby boy. Um, he served three years for that and it was down in England and as soon as he got out he um moved back he moved back up to Scotland where nobody knew him and he basically just started a brand new life where nobody knew him up here. So I don't understand how he got to work in all these youth clubs and stuff because you know if you work with kids you need to have um, a clean PVG, you need to have a clean disclosure, you need to be totally vetted and Obviously he wasn't, or they just let it go, either way, do you know what I mean? But he shouldn't have been working with kids if he had a conviction for child abuse, but he was anyway. So they thought this was well hidden, until Strachan thought he had deleted everything off his laptop and he took it in to get repaired. So he's handed his laptop in and the, the computer technician has found these absolutely horrendous images in his computer. So he's obviously phoned the police straight away. The police have came, took the laptop, they took it back to the station, they started looking through it and they were horrified at what they found. This wasn't just a case of like um, people swatting pictures of child abuse on online, that was much bigger than that. Um, so straight away Neil Strachan and James Rennie were arrested and the police started in 2007 Operation Algebra. So this was set up and because of the severity and how big this was, they had to bring in the FBI, the CIA and Interpol. So they were all involved in this investigation to try and catch all these people that was involved in this. Um, so it turned out there was 40 plus members in this group all over the world. There was only eight of them arrested and charged and the eight of them arrested and charged were for Scotland. Um, they never managed to track the rest of them down. So they were arrested, the eight of them were arrested and I'll tell you all their names at the end because these will be getting ready to get out of jail now so it's important that, that we all know who these people are um, because all these people live in Glasgow. So jumping to the court case, right, the court case started and this is where it's going to get graphic and this is where it gets into detail and this is a hardest bit of this story, right. So the court started and the details that emerged were absolutely horrendous. They were that bad that for the second time in Scottish history there was counsellors and different people brought into the court for the members of the jury mm. and for the... <laughs> for... Sorry. Um, there was councillors brought into the court for people that that live that were in the court because they knew that this was going to be absolutely horrendous. The details that they were going to hear. So there was councillors and psychologists brought into the court for the second time ever in Scotland. So 
The jury viewed over 1,452 images, videos and chat logs of the worst category of child abuse, bestiality, sadism and rape of babies. So um, they say rapey babies is raping my child under three years old. That's classed as a baby. Um, so that was what the videos and the images were on the computer. Um, it was near any children older than three years old that they were watching being raped and being brutalised. Um, the court also learned that they would often meet up, these eight of them that were arrested, they would often meet up in shady car parks and they would have printed these pictures out of these babies getting raped and they would swap them with each other in the car park and then they would have sex in the car park while looking at all of these images. Um, there was chat logs read out in the court and this is quotes for the chat logs. So James Rennie, his name on these chat logs was KP Lover, which stands for Kiddie Porn Lover. So he didn't even try to hide it, do you know what I mean? He had KP Lover and then in brackets, Kiddie Porn Lover. So that was his name in these chat logs. He had a conversation with somebody else in this group. This guy was from the Netherlands. This is a quote what this guy said to James Rennie and the chat logs, they were talking about what they would always talk about, raping babies and, and how they rape babies and the easiest way to rape babies. And then this guy says, well, I have a son. His ending remains to be seen, but I enjoy the thought of strangling him while raping him. Now, the Dutch police were involved in this um, this investigation and they never managed to track this guy down or this, this wee boy, so God knows what's happening to, to this wee boy right now, if he's even still alive, do you know what I mean? That's that's his own dad, do you know what I mean? Um, then Renny replies, oh my God, that's so hot. Does anyone have any porn of Down syndrome kids or even babies under a year? being raped or sodomised doesn't even have to be fully raped. Like, why? Do you know what I mean? I don't even know what to say. Like, how can anybody get enjoyment out of watching a wee baby that age being raped? But this was part of the chat logs that were read out. The court then learned that Rennie had abused his friend's three-month-old baby when he was trusted to babysit. So, as I said, these guys were, they were kind of respected before all this came out. They had a lot of friends. They had friends that trusted them enough to um, ask them to be godfather of their son, which obviously he said I straight away. So, um, they trusted him with that baby. They they, they were they were all best friends. They, they never had any reason whatsoever to, to suspect him, to do anything like that. And then one night they asked him to babysit um, and the court heard that the night he was trusted to babysit, he photographed and he videoed the abuse taking place and he shared that in his group. He then said in a chat log, I'd like to share him with you. He's hot. Maybe Saturday. Put it in your diaries. So when the police learned what had happened, the police then had to go and tell this wee baby's parents, like, this is what's happened to your son. He was abused and it's been put over the internet and, and it was by your best mate and you literally don't have a clue. So the police had to go and break the news to the baby's parents. That baby had to be taken for an STD and HIV test at three months old because James Rennie has HIV and he knows he has HIV and he's abusing kids. So that poor wee baby had to be taken and had to be given all different tests at three months old because of that bastard. Um, another bit of the chat log, Strachan said to Rennie, I might have as a contact with two boys, age two and four months. Only problem is they're in Warrington. And Rennie replies, that's all right, I don't mind travelling for a bit of fun. Again, like... How's that? How can? How's that fun? Like, I, I don't understand these people. But Cheshire police tried to locate these kids 
in question, never locate, never ever managed to locate the kids or the contact they spoke about in the chat log, um, and they did try for years, um, but there was just they just couldn't find them. There was just no evidence, uh, n no evidence. There was just no trace of them. Um, so again, God knows what's happening to the wee kids. Do you know what I mean? Um, so. There's some bits of this that I, I'm not even going to go into because it's, it's, I, I can't, the sheer reason I can't, you, you can look at it and you can, I don't know, you can Google it and research it yourself and you can read all the absolutely horrendous bits, a lot of the bits I've left out of this because I just, I can't go into that, I'm telling you what I can tell you and that's it and the rest is up to you. Um, so that's it, Cheshire Police never located the kids. It was then told how Strachan spoke about having fun with two boys aged 6 and 18 month old at a Hogmanay party. He had been invited to this Hogmanay party again by people that trusted him and thought that he was their friend. So he went to this Hogmanay party and while everybody was partying down the stairs, he's went up the stairs and he's, he's raped the babies. Well, I don't know if he's raped them, but he has whatever. I'll read it to you and you can make up your own mind. So, it was then told how Strachan spoke about having fun with two boys aged 6 and 18 month old at a Hogmanay party he had been invited to. Again, he photographed, videoed and this time he phoned someone while he was abusing the kids to let them listen on the phone. This picture was the most extreme picture that had been shown that day in the court. And this picture was dubbed by the police in the courts as the Hogmanay image because they says that it's a picture that n nobody in that courtroom will ever, ever forget. It was the most horrendous image that, that they've ever, ever seen. When it was showed to the court, lawyers and members of the jury completely broke down, including the judge who stopped the full court session to run out the court and be sick. Now, that's a judge that has worked in the court system for... 25 years plus um, she has seen you can imagine that she what she's in a high court you can imagine the horrendous things that she's seen but she had to stop this the case when this picture was shown because it was that horrendous so you make up your own mind about that do you know what I mean when court resumed the judge said what is shown in this photograph is utterly sickening, appalling and would shock to the core any right-minded person who's seen it. This can be properly described as a sickening and horrendous crime, the worst I have ever seen in my lifetime. She sentenced James Rennie and Neil Stratton to life with a minimum of 16 and 17 years, but only to be, only to be released when deemed safe by the parole board. The other guys were sentenced to between 17 years, years, years. Right, so the other guys were sentenced to between 7 and 13 years. I'm going to read these guys' names out to you, right, because this is important. I'm going to tell you that Three years after all these guys were sentenced, they appealed against their sentences. The, the eight of them appealed against their sentences. The eight of them won their appeal and the eight of them got their sentences slashed in half for raping babies and putting it online. Do you know what I mean? What the fuck? So, as far as I know, these these are new out of jail yet, but they put at any time now because they're sentenced half to means that they should have already been it a couple of years previous to now so they'll be due to get out any time now and they're going to come back to Glasgow and they're going to try and live a normal life no so I'm going to read their names out to you these come from Govan Hill Govan Easter House um, Brigton and I can't remember the other place, but I'll put a list up after the live of their names and where they exactly they come from. So, so there was James Rennie, Neil Strachan, they were the ring, ringleaders. Then there was Colin Slavin, Ross Webber, Craig Both, Neil Campbell, John Milligan and John Murphy. 
and they're off to Glasgow and they're all going to go back to Glasgow and think that, that they can just live a normal life and amongst their children and they're not, but they're really not. So if anybody knows anything about these guys, then please contact me or Mandy and let us know because I've been researching like mad and I can't find anything to say that they're out of prison yet. So if any of you know anything, then let us know. But that was it. They go, um, yep, they were, all, they were all basically sentenced to life with a minimum of between 13, 16, 17 years they all appealed, they all won their appeals, got their sentences slashed. So they got what? Fucking six, seven years for raping babies? Babies of three months old? That's fucking madness. But that's the Scottish justice system for you, and this is why we stand with anti corruption Scotland, and people don't understand this. You cannot fight for children and not fight against corruption. People say to me, Mandy, you can't, if, uh, you can't be fighting against corruption and fighting for children. It's one or the other. No, mate, you're absolutely wrong. You cannot fight for children and not fight against corruption. It's impossible. You've you've got to fight against the both of them. It's, it's absolutely madness. So there's a Scottish justice system for you again. Half the... The sentences for raping babies, so that's just basically telling people, like, feel free to go out there and rape babies, and then come and day six years in the jail, it'll be an absolute fucking canter, do you know what I mean? You'll get a computer, you'll get phone calls, you'll get good food. Go and do what you want, do you know what I mean? Bullshit, and this needs to be changed. This is what me and Mandy's... Well, we've... We weren't not going to tell anybody yet, but this is what we're trying to fight to get changed. Oh, this, this, this is absolutely shocking. Six years for raping my baby. This James Rennie, as I said, was already in jail. He's already done three years in 1997 for raping my, uh, raping my baby at three. And then he comes out the jail, moves to Scotland and goes and works in a fucking youth club and starts running his own fucking youth club. What the fuck? Do you know what I mean? What is happening? What is happening in this country? Seriously, what the fuck is happening? Why is nobody outraged about what's happening? Why is people not standing with us every single fucking Saturday shouting about this? It's mental, man. Nobody really cares until it happens to their kid. And trust me, the amount of things that we've exposed that's happened in Scotland that nobody has a clue about, it's going to happen to your kid one day unless you open your fucking eyes to what's actually happening. It's it's absolutely crazy. I already came on a couple of months ago. I told you about the grooming gang in Glasgow, 42 member grooming gang, Glasgow City Centre. It was kept secret for the public. Why was it kept secret for the public? We have a right. We have a right to know so we can protect our children. Do you know what I mean? We need to know who's walking about our streets. It's absolute bullshit. Um, I'm going to come back on, on Thursday and I'm going to talk about the grooming gang again just to keep it fresh on people's minds what was happening with that. Um, that was Operation Dash and Operation Cotswold that were merged into the one and it was absolutely fucking massive um, and there's so many mistakes made in that that it now gets referred to as a Glasgow Rotherham case. Like how fucking embarrassing, do you know what I mean, that Scotland's tarred with that. It's an absolute joke. Our children are not safe. They're not safe at all. And nobody cares. The story I've just told you makes it clear that nobody cares. Six years for raping my baby. Nobody cares about our children. We're the only ones that are going to be able to protect our children. So we need to know fucking everything that's happening on our streets. And that's why me and Mandy are here. <laughs> so... Mandy, if you've not watched Mandy's live, please go and watch it. She exposed about, um, basically, a, about policemen that were, police Scotland, that were absolute dirty paedophiles. Go on and watch Mandy's live if you've not watched it. I'll be back on in, um, what day is it today, Tuesday? I'll be back on in Thursday, and I'm going to go back over the grooming, the Glasgow grooming ring, the one that they tried to keep secret. Um, and if I've got enough time, I'll talk about something else as well and Mandy will let you know when she's coming back on. But I'll put the names up of uh, all these fucking monsters after they're alive, and I'm going to put their locations up as well where they lived at the time when they were arrested. Mm -hmm. Just in case they move back there or move into that area, then we're aware, do you know what I mean? So 
I'll put all that up after the live and I'll be back on on Thursday. And that's me. So thanks very much for watching.